This is crazy. Check out what I just found. This is the time stone. I'm going to project myself into the future to see all the possibilities in 2023 where the stock market goes up. Ugh, how many futures did you see? 69 billion, 420 million, and one. How many times did the stock market go up? Zero. All right, so understanding the past is pretty easy, but predicting the future is really hard. So in today's video, my goal is for all of us to make a prediction about what will happen to the markets for 2023. But it's not just any prediction. We're gonna take a quiz that was designed by one of the leading financial sources, which I actually use for a lot of my videos. They designed a 16 question quiz that asks you anywhere from where you think interest rates are going to what you think Bitcoin's price will be by the end of 2023 because the person who gets the most questions right will win themselves a Tesla Model Y. Just kidding. That would be super cool though. I'm not there yet though, not with these views, but maybe someday if you wanna volunteer your Tesla, that's fine with me, but let's get right into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well, come for the finance and stay for the first question, which is just your name and email. My name is Andre Jick, not Andre Jike, not Andre Jeek, not Andre, but Andre Jick. Like magic, it's really easy and important because you get 400 points in your SAT just for putting your name down. But for real, the first question is, what do you think the S&P 500 index will return in 2023, including dividends? This question, of course, refers to this stock right here, which is VOO, the ETF of the top 500 companies in the US. Where is it gonna be by the end of the year? Is it A, negative, B, zero to 10%, C, 10 to 20%, or D, above 20%. Now, in order for things to be negative, in my opinion, we'd have to have the same negative factors affect us this year again, which chances are they won't happen exactly the same way. So I'm gonna say the market has a slightly higher chance of being positive, but not by much. Because I'm an optimist, I'm gonna go with B, zero to 10% on this one. Question number two asks, what will this year's big financial surprise be? Is it A, the stock market will be in the red? Is it B, oil ends below $60 a barrel, right now it's at 77? C, the 10-year treasury yield finishes above 4.5%, or D, Bitcoin finishes above $30,000, or even E, none of the above. All right, so personally, I'm not so sure that oil is gonna fall, or at least not very far, just because it's still in demand, there's still a crisis going on in Europe. I also don't think Bitcoin is gonna be above $30,000, because for that to happen, we would have to have positive regulations, the approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF, and none of those things are gonna happen in 2023, considering all of the crypto collapses that happened in 2022, the stable coin risks with Tether and Binance and all of the unknowns. I also don't wanna pick E, none of the above, because that's a little boring, so I'm gonna go with C, yields could finish above 4.5%, because remember the Fed is still raising rates in 2023. All right, question number three asks, which stock market sector will fare the best in 2023? Tech, energy, healthcare, financials, or consumer staples? Now, for some reason, I don't think it's gonna be tech, because anytime I think of tech winning, I think of gains that are way bigger than 10% per year, and I don't think the market will do that. Could be energy. My number one best stock was actually ExxonMobil for 2022, but those energy stocks already went up so much, could they repeat this again in 2023? Maybe, maybe not. Now it could also be healthcare because my second best stock in 2022 was Cardinal Health. But that stock, like every other healthcare stock, was boosted partially because people were worried that another pandemic could happen. Hopefully not, but that's a possibility. I also, I'm not 100% sure about financials because even though banks do make more money when interest rates go up and they're scheduled to, because when they lend, they make more money from their customers, but also if there's a recession, which I think will happen, that could also hurt their lending and banks get a lot more conservative. They lend less, they make less. Not sure. And of course it could be consumer staples because consumers will always need a staple. Just kidding, not literally, but you know what I mean. The safest pick out of all of these is consumer staples because to me, consumer staples doesn't necessarily make the most money, they tend to lose the least though. That's the defensive pick. But if I had to pick one and bet my money, I'm gonna go with energy once again. I think energy is gonna be in huge, big lead demand in 2023 and it'll sell like hotcakes. Question number four is really juicy. It's asking where you think Bitcoin's price will be at the end of 2023. Here's what I think, but first a quick word from today's sponsor. All right, so it's no secret that most Americans that are investing their money in the markets right now are losing a lot of money. But here's what's even more interesting. Americans lost roughly $6.9 billion to online crime in 2021 alone 
far outpacing home burglaries. And yet, we continue to invest our money into physical protection, things like security cameras and smart doorbells, leaving ourselves completely vulnerable to digital crimes. So now more than ever, as we enter into a potential 2023 recession, it's important to protect ourselves. And I think I found the solution Aura. Aura is an all-in-one safety service that proactively protects you and your family from digital crime. And with this one service, you get everything from identity theft protection, password management, financial fraud detection. It's also a VPN service that allows you to safely and privately browse the web, and it monitors the dark web for any information that might expose your emails, your passwords, and your social security numbers. They also monitor all three credit bureaus to make sure no one's trying to access your credit to get a loan in your name. They can lock your Experian credit file. They can monitor your credit card transactions and they have a 24-7 US-based customer support team and they do all of that all in one place. I've been using them myself and I found dozens and dozens of websites that revealed sensitive information and at least four instances on the dark web which I asked them to opt me out of. And if that wasn't enough, they include a $1 million identity theft insurance with every single plan. And you can try them out for free today to see if your data was already part of a data breach. And all you have to do is go to aura.com forward slash Andre and you can try it out for free. Thank you Aura for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now let's get back to it. All right, so back to question four. Where will Bitcoin's price be? Is it under 10,000, 10 to 20K, 20 to 30, or above 30? Now I don't think it's gonna be above $30,000 because again, everything would have to go right for Bitcoin and I don't think that's gonna happen in 2023. Now I also don't think it's gonna be below $10,000 unless something catastrophic happens. Horrible regulations, the collapse of Binance or Tether or some other major stable coin, something that bad would have to happen. I don't think regulations alone would push Bitcoin below 10K because Bitcoiners are too stubborn. It could bob around between 20 to 30K with a promise of a brighter future, but personally, I'm gonna go between 10 and $20,000, just my guess. Question number five asks, which mega cap stock will generate the best return in 2023? Tesla, Google, Amazon, Berkshire, or Apple? This is a hard question because it could literally be any of these. But what's interesting about these options is that all of them are tech with the exception of one, Berkshire Hathaway. If I was playing this quiz correctly, I would diversify my answers. So I'd probably pick one of the tech stocks because Berkshire Hathaway is more in line with my other answers. And if I had to pick from tech, I'm leaning towards Apple because they could announce the Apple car in 2023 and just blow everyone away and the stock goes crazy. Or it could be Tesla because you could argue it has the most upside because it lost the most in 2022. And if Elon could get it together, the stock could go crazy. Could be any one of them. But if I had to pick, I'm gonna go with Berkshire Hathaway because I think it's more in line with how I'm envisioning the stock market to be in 2023, which is sort of uneventful. Warren Buffett would uh, approve this message. Question number six, which losing stock from 2022 will do the best in 2023? Meta? Disney, Intel, or Nike? This question, I have zero clue. I don't think it's gonna be Meta, which means Meta's probably gonna be the one that wins, so pick that one. Now, personally, I'm gonna go with Disney. I own the stock, I'm rooting for Disney, so I'll go with Disney. Question seven, which winning stock from 2022 will fare the worst in 2023? Exxon, Merck, Deer, Campbell Soup. I'm gonna guess Merck. I don't really follow it very closely. I don't know much about the stock, so I'm gonna pick that one. Listen, I know this is horrible research, but I'm telling you, picking which stocks are gonna do the best or the worst is again, as good as just flipping a coin and seeing where it lands. Question number eight, what will happen to Washington DC? Trump is indicted, Biden won't be reelected, Supreme Court nixes Biden's student loan forgiveness, or Justice Clarence retires from the Supreme Court. Now here I think multiple things could happen, but I'm not gonna get into them because I don't wanna talk about politics, but I don't think that student loans will be forgiven, so I'm gonna go with C for this one. Question number nine. Name the top stock in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, including dividends. Now, the Dow Jones tracks the top 30 blue chip stocks. I don't really track the index, so I don't really know, but for 2023, I'm gonna go with the best one as being Chevron. I still think oil and energy are gonna do really well in 2023, just a guess. Question 10 asks, what's the worst stock in the Dow Jones? Now this question I probably had the hardest time answering and figuring out because I literally have no idea. I don't even know where to start, but I'm gonna go with Verizon on this one. I have Verizon and I don't like Verizon. Question number 11, how many times will the Federal Reserve raise rates in 2023? And I think I know how to answer this one because we know so far that the interest rates today 
are between 4.25 and 4.5%. The Fed's goal is to get to 5.25%, let's say even 5.5%. That means they'll have to raise the rates either one time 0.75% or if they don't wanna scare the markets, twice by half a percent. So I'm gonna go with between one to two times for 2023. So looks like it's B for this one. Question 12, what will inflation be in 2023 as measured by the consumer price index? Okay, so this one is juicy because I remember that the last time we got the CPI was November and that was 7.1%. Now for this year, I think it's gonna keep going lower but I don't think they're gonna to get to their target rate of two to 4% yet. They might get to maybe like 4.1% at the lowest. So I'm gonna go that as the starting range. So whatever that is, I think it's C, 4.1 to 6%. Question 13, which asset class will fare best in 2023? Cash, US stocks, international stocks, commodities, or US bonds? Interesting question. I don't think it's gonna be cash unless you park it in a high yield savings account. But high yield savings accounts are getting their high yields from those banks parking their money in bonds. So because there's a man in the middle, you're always gonna get slightly less from your cash than you would directly going into bonds yourself. So I think bonds will outperform cash. And when it comes to commodities, the first thing I think of is gold and silver. Now I don't invest in commodities, so I know very little about them, but when it comes to gold, for example, that was actually flat, if not negative, for 2022, which is weird because if gold ever had a chance to shine, it would have been in 2022 when inflation was really hot, and yet it didn't do so good. So I don't think it's gonna be commodities unless they're referring to oil. Could be oil or stocks and bonds. I think it's between those two for me. Could be stocks, could be bonds, but I'm gonna stay with my optimistic outlook and pick B, US stocks. Question 14, which prominent CEO will be gone by the end of 2023? No. Not Warren Buffett, I hope he's not gone. I'm gonna be so sad because then doing his voice is gonna be very, very poor taste. But seriously, I don't know any of them. I don't really care to, so I'm just gonna pick F. All of them will still stay on the job. Number 15, which commodity will perform the best in 2023? Oil, corn, copper, natural gas. Again, I don't know much about commodities because I don't invest in them, but if I had to pick one, I'm gonna stick with A, oil. Question 16, when will the Federal Reserve pivot and cut the key federal funds rate? Now, I actually did a video on this, and at the end of the video, the conclusion was that, according to experts, the Fed would not lower rates until 2024. But I don't know if they took into account the election cycle, because if the president pressures Jerome Powell to lower the interest rates to get reelected, that could happen as early as 2023, or if he forgets, the second half of 2023. Now, if I was a professional based on research, I would pick C, but because I'm not, I'm going with B. Overall, my opinion, and this is probably 95% wrong, is that asset prices, for the most part, will not go up by much thanks to interest rates still staying high for the majority of 2023, unless there's political pressure, but there's a catch. One of two things will happen. Either number one, if Mr. Biden remembers that anytime you change interest rates, it takes about 12 to 24 months for the economy to really feel it. If he remembers that, he'll pressure Papa Powell to lower those interest rates in the first half of 2023. But my prediction is Mr. Biden will forget that and he probably won't pressure him until at least the second half of 2023, in which case we won't feel the benefits of that until much later. Now, how this will affect stocks and crypto and everything else is that it will probably hold things back from climbing really high. That doesn't mean assets will end up red at the end of the year, but I do think it's not gonna gain much. In fact, bonds might even outperform stocks again in 2023 because bond interest rates are still pretty high. Overall though, I think investing in 2023 is going to be pretty uneventful. I love making videos about Dogecoin and how some random asset made some random millionaires happen. Those are fun videos to make, but I don't think we're gonna see a lot of that, which means you're probably gonna see a lot less of me in 2023 if my videos are not recommended, just because it's not gonna be that exciting. I hope I'm wrong though, and we go to the moon. Send this video to a bunch of your friends so they can take the quiz and I can get more views. And then we can maybe sponsor with that Tesla. As always though, have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stocks, links down below, and then go track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. Love you, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you back here on Monday, Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. See you soon, bye-bye.